Is God truly great? Ten or one? Now I know this title probably confused some of you, but as we go through it, you'll understand. And remember, these studies is about encouraging the brethren to make sure that the Lord, through their life, through your life, brothers and sisters in Christ, that the Lord is being seen as being great by your actions and how you live and by your stance. Okay? So today we're going to go to Luke 17, 11. For you guys to know this story, you understand where I'm getting. Okay? Luke 17, 11. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, this is Jesus, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Now, the first thing we got to do to be very important so you can understand the magnitude of this study is Exodus 4 6. This is Moses before God and the burning bush. And the Lord said, Furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Okay. Leprosy is no joking matter. Um, and we'll show a picture here in a second. But Matthew 10, 8, you've got to ask yourself, well, was le leprosy a big thing back then when Jesus was walking and doing his earthly ministry? Matthew 10, verse 8, if you want to turn there for a second. I looked into it, and leprosy is very gruesome. And we'll get into the definition of what leprosy is and everything. But Matthew 10, 8 this is a command he gives, that Jesus gives. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely give. Clean, or cleanse the lepers. Leprosy was a big thing back then. Uh, you go back to the Old Testament, there were laws about people who had lepers, leprosy, how they had to go outside the, the, the camp and do things until they were clean and then they were allowed to come back into the camp. Okay. Leprosy, uh, Webster's 1828 dictionary says, a foul, contagious disease, contagious disease, appearing in dry, white, thin, scruffy scabs, attended with violent itching. It is sometimes covers the whole body, but rarely the face. Now, the worldly definition I went ahead and looked that up too. A contagious disease that affects the skin, mucous membranes, and nerves causing discoloration, white is one of the colors, and lumps on the skin, and in severe cases, disfigurement and deformities. Okay. Um, real quick, we're going to show a picture, and this picture is the mildest picture I could find because I didn't want to truly vex you, brothers and sisters in Christ. But I wanted you to understand the seriousness of these ten people having leprosy and what it's like to have leprosy. So I'm going to show you this picture real quick. Now as I just showed you, that's just a foot. The toes are deformed. The whole skin is white. But when I was looking this up, there is such gruesome pictures of what people are going through in Africa and I think uh, Asia. There's still leprosy going on today. It's not something that's just history and it's just the past. But the whole point of this is to know how bad these guys were suffering and what they were going through. I can't imagine it because I've never had something like that. And it's just one of those things where it's such pain and suffering that you're going through on a day-to-day -day basis. So you have these ten, okay, that, uh, ten lepers which stood afar off. So now we're going to Luke 17, verse 13. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Okay, they lifted up their voices. They didn't just say, hey, Jesus. It was almost like they were screaming. These were desperation of men who have this disease. It was desperation, the suffering, and they're like, Jesus... You know, have mercy on us. Verse 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass, 
that as they went, they were cleansed. Okay? This is a severe, painful, vexing disease. So they were cleansed. Now, how many people, both lost and saved, are always asking God for help? Now, don't get me wrong, the lost, God will not hear the lost world. Um, as far as anybody who holds iniquity in their heart, God will not hear them. The only people God hears is truly Bible-believing, God-fearing, born-again Christian men and women, you brothers and sisters in Christ. He also hears the voice of people coming to the cross, taking the iniquity in their heart and throwing it at the feet of the cross. Repenting, believing, confess in their heart, they throw it at the foot of the cross. And at that point, God can hear them. And that's when they confess both in prayer and they call upon the name of the Lord to save them. So, um, Psalm 66, 18, I said this in a lot of my studies, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You can't hold sin in your heart. You can't justify sin. That's a sign of a, lo of, of a false convert. It's someone who justifies sin. Uh, it's one of the signs. Struggle with sin? Yes. Have a hard time with sin? Absolutely, you can be saved. But justifying sin? It's a red flag. I'm not saying it guarantees your loss, but it's a red flag. Okay. So these people say, Lord, uh, Jesus, have mercy on me. They said, Master, have mercy on us. And Jesus says, go show yourself, because it's still the Old Testament, it's not the New Testament. Go show yourselves to the priest, and it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. So now we get to the heart of this study and this encouragement to you, brothers and sisters in Christ. What were the attitude of the ten people? Verse 15, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Is God truly great in your life? Okay. First Corinthians two, First Corinthians one twenty-seven, chapter one, verse twenty-seven. But God hath chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. In other words, for this study, people who don't want to give glory to God and base things off the world. You know, it was the world that did it. This is the world that gave me this. This is the world. It's my intelligence. It's my strength. It's, you know, people I hang out with. And based things off the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen. A lot of people give glory to false gods, uh, pagan idols. Hath God chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him that but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification. A lot of the uh, easy believers don't like that, but sanctification and redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Okay. We are to give God glory. One of the signs of God being truly great in your life is giving God glory. Giving Him the glory in all things. 2 Corinthians 10, 17, But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Oh, God, I give God the glory. Okay, Anytime, I always pray to God for strength because of my seizure disorder. Uh, my muscles aren't the best anymore. Um, if you see me moving around a lot, that when I shift um, my last video, I didn't realize, so I hope a lot of you brothers and sisters in Christ out there aren't laughing too hard, but as I was talking to you guys in the last study, um, I think it was the repentance word study, I was shifting, and the next thing I know, I kept getting closer and closer and closer to the camera. But I have a hard time standing in one spot for a good while, and I don't have that much strength, so anytime I'm moving furniture or I'm doing work, that requires heavy lifting, um, when I'm able to do it, I don't go, yes, I'm getting stronger. I don't go, you know, taking pictures of myself, you know, I do it jokingly sometimes, but taking pictures of myself flexing and putting it out there saying, hey, everybody, look at my strength. I give God the glory. 
I, you don't know how much I thank the Lord when I'm able to accomplish stuff that I know is physically difficult for me. It's God. Are you giving God the glory in all things? Are you being like the nine people that went about their business and continued in the world and it was no big deal? Oh yeah, I, I got cleansed of leprosy. We saw how bad the leprosy is. Oh, it's just no big deal. You know, I got cleansed. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And they go off and start living in the world. They didn't give God the glory. They didn't give Jesus Christ the glory. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatever ye, whatsoever ye do, do all to glory, do all to the glory of God. When you do something, you're to give God glory. And here's the kicker, brothers and sisters in Christ, that kicks people in the butt and kicks me in the butt. Can you glorify the God, can you glorify God and sin while you're sinning? I guess that's the best way to say it. Can you glorify God in something that's sinful? I have so many people that were fighting me on video games saying, it's liberty, it's liberty. Can you glorify God playing a satanic, wicked video game? Can you glorify God movies, TV shows? Can you glorify God by going out and getting drunk? Smoking cigarettes? Chew. I know a lot of people in the military, I was in the military, they chew tobacco. I mean, there's a lot of things that people do. Can you glorify the God doing something that's sinful? No. Notice it says here, you're to do all to, to the glory of God. Everything you do, you give God the glory. I have a hard time sleeping, and God got me to sleep. Praise the Lord. I got to sleep. I got six hours of sleep tonight. Praise the Lord. All right. Moving stuff around, praise the Lord. There's a lot of times where I almost did something that could have hurt me really bad, and it didn't. And I'm like, thank you, Lord. Give God the glory. Not me. All I, I hate using the word lucky. Sometimes I'll slip up and say the word luck. That's worldly. We should get that out of our vocabulary. There's God's will. Okay. It has nothing to do with luck. So everything you do is supposed to glorify the God. And it's not just enough to have that feeling. It's also about words. Over and over in these studies, brothers and sisters in Christ, they talk about it. When you need God's help, you call upon the name of the Lord. When you give God thanks, you do it verbally in prayer. Sometimes I do it in front of other people. It just comes out. It needs to get that way with us, brothers and sisters in Christ. Give God glory in all things. Lord, it was all you. But nothing I did, that was all you. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Ten people, only one person turned back. And gave God glory. Now, uh, James 1, 17. Now, I know James is written to the 12 tribes in the time of Jacob's trouble, but there's instruction in righteousness here. James 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Okay? God's the one that gives us gifts. Perfect gifts, let's see, good gifts and every perfect gift. When you have things that are going on in your life and there's going to be tough times, you're going to go through uh, trials and tribulation, um, you're going to go through hard times because of your own actions, when you make bad choices, there's times I believe you're going to go through tough times because God wants to, um, like you're getting prideful or something, and He wants to humble you or keep you humble. He knows down the road he sees something that might make you get prideful, so he's humbling you before you hit that situation so you don't get prideful. You make it right through it and you don't get prideful. Okay. Uh, so for the man we're talking about, it's getting a little breezy, I hope it's not affecting the camera, the volume, I apologize. That's why I'm waiting for the wind to go by. Okay, for this man, what perfect gift was was his healing? Um, let's see if I can pronounce this right. For this man, what perfect gift was healing him from leprosy? What greater gift? He's going through such pain and such suffering in life, and Jesus comes along and he's like, Master, have mercy on us, but on me. And when it happened and he was cleansed, he gave God the glory. What great gift for us today than salvation? How many of you, brothers and sisters in Christ, that came to true salvation, the 
true gospel, worshiping the true Jesus Christ of the Godhead of the King James Bible, how many of you guys off and on go, Lord, thank you, thank you for saving me? Wasn't nothing I did. It's what you did, and I don't deserve to be saved. How many of you, every once in a while, you stop and look back at your life, and it's like, Lord, I didn't deserve to be saved. Lord, it was all you. It was grace. It was your glory. Um, giving God glory in all things. Let's go back to Luke 17, verse 16, and try to wrap up the story. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Now, he didn't just gave, give God the glory, but he fell down on his face. Reverence. True reverence for Jesus Christ. You don't get that a lot today. A lot of these professing Christians do not reverence Jesus Christ to the King James Bible. They hate Him. They can't stand Him. But it wasn't that He just gave God the glory, but He reverenced Jesus Christ. He fell down on His face at His feet. 17. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? This is tough for me, and I'm going to kick myself as well as you, brothers and sisters. How many times we have great things happen in our life that we fall, we kind of get distracted by it, and we don't give God the glory right away? Um, there's times I look back and say, oh, Lord, I forgot to give you glory for that. Thank you, thank you, Lord. All glory be to you. How many times that it's, it's a struggle to get used to that, because hardly people do that today. We're commanded to. But how often do you, do, do you realize, like, t through testimonies and everything, that people are giving God glory? They're thanking God, but you don't hear it as often. Okay? We need to focus on that, brothers and sisters in Christ. Most of the time you give God the glory, it's going to be between you and Him. But don't be ashamed to say, if someone goes to give you a compliment, you say, well, God, to God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. It was always God. You know, I'm still... I'm still here because I, I do a lot of things that could really hurt me and, and uh, God saves me. It's, it's God's glory that I'm still here. Okay. 18, verse 18. There are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger. Okay. So many people are asking God for help. All these pagan religions are asking lowercase g God for help, Satan and these false Christianity religions that aren't Christianity at all. And um, when you get a true Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian man or woman with, that, you know, changed life, and they come before the Lord, that's his attitude. He's like, you know, there are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger. Notice we're Gentiles. Okay? God came for the, Jesus came for the Jewish people. That's why I said this story, and its truth, is in the Old Testament. You can't take something that's in the Old Testament and say it's major doctrine for today. Okay. Verse 19, And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. I believe that every one of, I believe that even one of ten men here still pleased God. Even if it was one out of a million, God wants you to give Him glory in all things. That is what pleases Him. It doesn't matter that there's one in a million people that give God glory. Praise the Lord. We are getting low in numbers. True, Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian men and women, you and I, we're getting low in numbers compared to the world. We're, God wants us to give Him glory, even if it's one out of a million. One out of ten. There was a time when it would have been 1 out of 10, but now it's like, you know, 1 out of 100, 1 of 1,000. And when I say about lost, now that it comes to my heart to let you know, how many of us look back in our past and said, hey, we could have died then, and I would have gone to hell. I could have died then, and I would have gone to hell. Do you give God glory for giving you more chances to the point where you finally dropped your self-righteousness and came to Him broken? and let God save you? That's a big thing to be given glory for. Okay? But Revelation, Revelation 
chapter 4, verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. I am given God glory. We are created to give God pleasure. So, my question to you, brothers and sisters in Christ, is God truly great in your life? One of the biggest examples, signs in your heart when you're evaluating your own life and how the lost world and even testimonies to brothers and sisters in Christ, are you giving glory to God in all things? Everything you do, are you doing it to the glory of God? Okay. Something to ask yourself. Is God great in my life? Am I giving God glory in everything? Am I failing to give God glory in this area of my life and that area of my life? Okay. Don't forget to give God glory in all things. It's one of the signs of God being great in your life. That's a sign of you saying God is great. The Bible says God is great. It's a fact. But are you living the life that shows that God is great in your life through you? We're ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Okay. So, remember to always ask yourself, is God great in my life? Is God truly great? Am I showing that God is truly great? I love my brothers and sisters in Christ out there. Uh, grace and peace from God our Father and love for, and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. See you in the next video.